Hey y'all, welcome to Adventures with Aggie brought to you by Coco's Coffee House. Today we have our second episode of our para sports series this week and we have Sarah Bolfinger. She's a para swimmer on the road to Tokyo. So please welcome Sarah. Sarah, how are you doing today? I am doing so amazing. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much. I feel like tables have turned since the last time we talked, <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on. Um, if we could just start by, can you give me some background on who you are and what you do? Yes. So um, my name is Sarah Bowfinger. I'm a national team para swimmer training for Tokyo and beyond. I'm also a coach, so I help people um, understand that they have the power to create the reality. And so just by sharing my experiences and getting to dive deep into their experiences, we create these amazing plans to help them execute it and um, dive into all the things that they're wanting to do. I love the dive in. I don't think you did that on purpose, but <laughs> it works. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. Well, let's kind of start, I guess, backtrack a bit. Why swimming? How did you, how did this become your sport? Yeah. So, um, I was actually born with hip dysplasia. So I needed a total of seven hip surgeries throughout between four months old to about 15 years old. And so I got into swimming because that was the one thing that really was like my joy after like having to have all these surgeries. So like it was my rehab, it was my happy place. It was the place that I really felt whole because having all these surgeries, not getting to walk on time or whatever that means, right? Like it's just, it just felt like I was normal in the pool. And so that evolved into at six years old, like my mom had me on the swim team and I was like, mommy, like, I love it. You know, like I definitely want to continue this path. And so, and then it evolved into like watching Olympic swimmers and like really having this dream of being an Olympic swimmer, but I didn't want to tell anyone because I was so afraid that like, well, what if it didn't happen? You know, it was like this, um, really like guilt of like, oh, I could never do that. Like I have these surgeries and like, you know, all these things. So that all of that created all of this self doubt, all of this unworthiness within my body. And then um, at age 15, I actually got to watch Michael Phelps like win all these gold medals when he was 15, because we're around the same age. And um, I basically had given up. I was like, you know what? There's no way that I could do it. Like I'm 15 now. That's when everyone does all these amazing things. And so then I kind of like sat in sorrow. And, and then I went to college, but ended up becoming, you know, a drug addict on pills and alcoholic. And, you know, and it was just like that unworthiness, that self-doubt that I had inside of me. I kept thinking that, you know, how am I going to get rid of it, right? And, and what I've learned over time is that, like, you clear these things based on feeling it, and then you're able to transmute it based on that. And so then I, you know, got into this amazing relationship that, you know, ended up not being so amazing for me, but I allowed it to um, turn me into really understanding that even if I lost everything, I didn't have any money, I didn't have any, I didn't know where I was going to live, I didn't know any of that, I could still pursue what I wanted to do based on what my thoughts were and how I would move to every now moment. And so then I've created now an amazing relationship, an amazing reality that I know that I've done based on all the work that I've done. And so that's how I've become even passionate about coaching people and things like that, because I know it's possible based on all the things that I've kind of done. And, and so now that's kind of led to the Paralympic movement and just just having fun and getting to see where I can take my body, um, no matter age, no matter what is going on, like you can always do your best in every now moment. That's awesome. It's such a fun story. I know I've already kind of heard some of it, but I still, I still love hearing you because you're so excited about it too, which makes it more fun, <laughs> more fun to listen to. <laughs> but um, I guess like kind of as a follow up to that, can you talk about how you wrapped your mind around your situation and how you were, I know like everybody's saying control the controllables. That's become a very common thing right now in the last year. But um, can you kind of just 
talk about how you did that when you were working to kind of turn your life and go towards this Paralympic movement? Yes, of course. So, you know, through like, I think just through learning, like, you know, it's like when you're on the other side and you start to see like how the mind works, like how things are created in your reality. And you start to like really start to be aware of like, okay, the, when I was having those thoughts back then, those thoughts were creating things that I didn't want. Right. So like, but the more that I would focus on the things I didn't want, I would then create that into my reality. And so like becoming aware of that was like the first key. The other thing has been, you know, meditation, really quieting the mind so that I can really get center and focused on what things I should be thinking about, what things I can pinpoint to change and learn and grow so that I can move past, you know, any past feelings that, just aren't, um, aren't relevant right now, you know, because a lot of times we can like get all bottled up about, you know, certain things. And, and I mean, it still happens. But like, the more that I'm aware of it, the the less it happens, like, it's just like, oh, I'm aware of it. Okay, oh, I get to learn that less again. And so then I start to evolve and expand based on that. Definitely, definitely. And then going off of that, can you talk about the integration between mental training versus physical training? I think a lot of athletes now are starting to prioritize the mental side of their game or their sport. And I don't think it was as common, I guess, a few years ago. Um, so can you just kind of talk about that? I know also Wilma does a lot of that as well. Um, but yeah, how do you integrate your mental and physical? Yeah. So it's so interesting because, um, you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, I do the meditation, I do breathing, I, I do all these things. And in practice, you know, I'm really calm and like all these things, right. And so this past week, I got to go to my first international para competition, right. And so like, all the things that I thought I was practicing, now got to all come up and be like, Oh, my gosh, like, I'm freaking out. I'm excited. I'm nervous, you know, and all these things. And so you know, it really allowed me to even like shift even more in terms of like, what else can I do to really sharpen the mental state, right? Because like, for me, I'm learning that like, a lot of times my mind really wants to know the unknown. It wants to know like, how is it going to go? What time am I going to get, you know, and all these things. And so to, to get comfortable with not knowing or even just trusting your training, right? And so like, for me, I learned like, I didn't necessarily have a plan day to day so that I could trust that plan and go into that with like, oh, I'm good, you know? Because I think that's what really like builds on is like knowing that you're gonna be okay based on what you've been practicing and then like leading that and allow and practicing it over and over and over and then allowing it to kind of be created in in the meat. So this is something I'm still like 100%, you know, focusing on more and more because it's just I just noticed that it's just a common thing, right, to get nervous or like, oh, I'm at this like really big thing, but it's not really a big thing. It's just another swim meet. But like the mind like gets all like wrapped up about, oh, my gosh, I'm going to see all these people and it's new energy and it's all these things. And so the excitement can also turn into anxiety. So it's just about like honing in, like what practices can I do? So what's really great is um for being a national team member, like Team USA actually created a whole mental training manual of like really asking yourself, like, how does it feel when I do really well? How does it feel when I don't do really well? And really like start feeling those feelings in the body. So you can really start like, just like being relaxed, you know, because the moment that your body is like, and then your mind starts going, it's all kind of, um, you know, gets all jumbled up. So to answer your question in one little thing, it's really like an ongoing thing. You know, the physical is ongoing because we're constantly having to learn new things and train new ways. And the mental is also evolving too, because you'll find things of things that come up that you thought were okay, but they're still there. And so it's like, how can I work and how can I change it and evolve, you know, through that? Definitely. I think the, the one thing that stuck out to me was what you were saying about goals. I find that myself and athletes, they're very goal oriented, right? Like 
you're working towards something big, the whole, I guess, like in this case, the Paralympic movement, right? And yeah. with me, it's probably graduating from NYU, <laughs> but that's kind of like, you think about what's coming. And I have that, that too, where I'm struggling with the day to day, like, what am I going to do tomorrow to make that or reach that goal? which I think is really interesting that you're talking about it. Yours is obviously in a completely different level than my homework assignments, but <laughs> the goal orientedness is a theme that I've seen when I, or I've heard when I'm speaking with these different athletes and things, but um, yeah, setting goals. It's important. It's really important. It is. And I think like the small, you know, like the small day-to-day -day goals too are important because like, if we're constantly thinking about the future or the unknown, like we can't actually like be in the present moment. And what I'm learning is like the present moment is the most important moment. Cause if I like look back of like, okay, this week, here's what I created. If I look back two months, like what, what was it? And like, for me, like, honestly, I was, I was getting a little nervous. I was like, not maybe as focused. Cause I'm like starting businesses and doing all these other really great things. And then it's like, oh my gosh, like literally, like I can create something based on the uh, efficiency and the effort that I'm putting into it, you know? So it doesn't matter whether it's homework or whatever it is, we can still maximize our effort based on what it is that we're doing in the now moment. Definitely. That's what I was going for, but you said it a lot better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Great. Um, well, let's talk about your training. What are you working on now? I guess what's your what's your focus right now? I know the games are coming up in a few months. What are we a hundred something days out from the start of the Paralympics? I think. Um, yeah. yeah. What's what's your training look like right now? Yeah. So after um, World Series, um, we've kind of dialed in as to what events um, can I be successful in, you know, so we're gonna do more sprinting events, just because like, um, as our bodies just get older with time, right, like, it doesn't mean old or whatever that means, but it just means that the recovery time and the things that my body is wanting is a little bit more. And so I'm having to like, adjust based on that. So now like we're basically, we've created a plan where I'm going to be like each day, I'll be focusing on one of those strokes that I'm doing for the race. So, you know, there's power involved, there's sprinting involved, there's uh, katsu and all these amazing like training devices that I have, you know, to really like dial in and like feel, feel like the intensity, like that you should be feeling in a race, like in practice, right? So like, let's, let me share a little bit. So today was the first day of my, my training, like the new training plan. So before, like I was really focused on yardage and all these things and, and that's really great, but you know, as time goes on, you know, it just, it just isn't maybe for uh, someone, you know, as our bodies are, are getting, you know, aging and things like that, it's just not maybe the recommended dose, I'll say of like, if I like, because if I'm plateauing, it means either I'm doing too much or too little, right. And so like, so basically, like going into this, I was like switching out of like almost 50,000 yards a week into doing like maybe 10,000. So it almost felt like a taper. But then it was like, the goal is to like really maximize like everything that you're doing, you know? So today, like I put all this like stuff on to really feel, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, like this felt harder than like the race. So I knew that I wasn't going to my capacity that I could have gone based on just not knowing, you know? So like the more that you practice the physical practice, the mental, you know, and all those things, like, then you can translate it into, into the, the race and things like that. So I'm already like feeling like it's effective because I'm like, wow, like I'm so sore. I like, I didn't even feel that sore after a race. And like, it's like, how do I know if I gave it my all, if I haven't practiced giving it my all. And so that's really um, what the focus is. We're just, I'm going to be doing four events at trials and, any nothing more than a hundred, you know, so I'll just be a backstroke fly freestyle and 50 free and just really dial in and, and really push my body so that I can see like 
how how far I can go, you know, in terms like now it's exciting because like it's like this is something that I've always wanted is to like have a plan, like really like, you know, even get to go to the trials and all these things. So now I'm like more enjoying like the process than I've ever enjoyed it before. And I'm not really attached into whatever that looks like, just like really getting excited about the day to day and see what I create at trials. That's awesome. You say all these things that you're doing, like it's nothing. Like, I think it's because <laughs> you're so excited about it that maybe that's why it sounds, it feels like it's nothing to you, but I'm like, wow, I couldn't swim 50 right now if I wanted to, <laughs> but that's awesome. I'm so excited to see it all play out. I know trials in a few months, so that's super exciting. I'll be watching for sure. Um, but I guess my next question for you is kind of about this road that you're on. I guess you started it today, <laughs> your new kind of training road and things. Um, but I ask this to all athletes who are training for Olympics or Paralympics, but what does the road to Tokyo mean to you? I feel like to me, it's like the hype on social media and like all that fun stuff. I, I feel like it's probably not the same for you. I don't know, but <laughs> maybe not. Um, so I guess what does that kind of road to whatever mean to you? I think for me, it's like, it kind of reminds me of like the yellow brick road, you know, in terms of like, so Dorothy, like she starts out on this like yellow brick road and her whole goal is to get home, but she has no idea like how, what's going to happen in between, how it's going to go, you know, and all of these things. And that's kind of what it is for me. Like in 2014, like I literally just said, I'm going to train for the Olympics. I have no idea how it's going to happen. And then all these little roads would come. And then 2019, I would be like, oh, I'm going to do para. And then all of a sudden, I'm on the national team. And then, you know, so I couldn't have predicted how this road would look. But for real, it's just about the road, you know, about like just having this destination. And whatever happens, you know, like already I got sponsored by a company that was from Tokyo, you know, so that's what it could look like, right? Like a road to whatever it could be, but just like for me to expand and grow and really learn about myself. Cause I've really learned about myself. And it's like the more that sometimes I get like really frustrated, I'm like, Oh, let me just give up. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh no, you got this other thing. And it's like, okay, I'll keep, you know, because Dorothy too, like she would get like really down, like, Oh, I don't know if we can go, you know, but then it was like, all these things would pop up, you know? So for me, this road feels like the yellow brick road and I am just going down. And the more that I go down and I get closer than I ever thought I would get, you know, I'm just like, wow. Like it just reminds me to really enjoy this process, enjoy, you know, the experience of just getting to do this and, you know, and all the above. So for sure. I'm going to use the yellow brick road to Tokyo as your promo because that's so good. I love that. <laughs> that's perfect. Awesome. That one might be my favorite answer to the road to Tokyo question. I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's what I think every time when I, when I do a road, you know, I'm just like, yeah. when I, when I see it, cause like a lot of times, you know, like at first when I started the road to Tokyo, it was like, oh my gosh, I got to get to Tokyo, you know, but the more that I've been on it, I mean, it's been 10 years, literally, ten, I started um, training even my body of being overweight 10 years ago. And then four years in, I was like, oh, let's train, you know, and now like, six years later, or seven years later, it's like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm literally like, going to trials and like, I want to do my best. And, and then it's like, all these things are manifesting based on all the effort that I've done. And like, now I finally am like, okay, like I, I'm ready, you know, I'm excited to like, just see what I can accomplish, just based on knowing that like every moment I create it. And so the more I can like get excited, getting out of bed and doing all those things, I'm going to create the best outcome for myself. Definitely, definitely. I think, I feel like this last year, everybody needs that, you know, like having those goals and having that something to wake up for and I think I do now, which is so exciting, but um, no, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Um, also, let's kind of move into the other stuff that you're doing. You do so many things. I don't know what to ask you, but um, <laughs> I, I want to start with Team Trust. Can you kind of just tell us what it is, what the mission is and what you're working on? Yeah, so um, Team Trust 
Productions is basically um, we want to create more trust in the world through media. So sharing films, sharing articles, a podcast, um, and just like really like creating like, you know, people with disabilities and people without disabilities and kind of bringing that unity together, you know, because I feel like in our world, um, you know, one, like we don't really trust each other, right? Like there's a lot of different racial things going on and, and different things like that. And I feel like if we can just understand that at the core, we're all human, you know, and we're all here to create um, positivity and love and, and unity in our world, you know, we can start just by each of us doing this in our own life, we can create a ripple effect in the world. And so that's kind of what the podcast Energetic Trust kind of does is I'm interviewing all people, all walks of life, just to kind of um, get to hear their story, get to help them feel comfortable in their story because everyone's story is different, right? No story is better or worse or whatever. It's all a story and someone can gain something from it. And so they, I mean, it just is amazing to be able to, to get to like pull that out of people and also, you know, doing that. And then I've also been, you know, adding um, coaching with that as well. So I do coaching, like all different types of things. I do spiritual spirituality coaching um, for a company. I'm with Spiritual Business Alchemy and we kind of help people um, create their businesses from the inside out. And so I'm like taking all the things that I learn in my entire life and I'm just putting it in places that I can help the world because I feel like this is a time where we all need trust and we all need help with each other and you know and it's important to based on like my experiences and how I feel in my body I feel like I'm ready to really help people like at the at the core and the most and um yeah so that's a little bit about um the trust team trust <laughs> That's so fun. I feel like all of the things that I know about you and we've spoken about, it sounds like all of those things put together with like a bow on top. And I love it. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. That's what it feels like. Cause even, um, so Ryan, the, um, the guy that, um, we kind of like had similar, um, values and wanted to kind of put them together. And so when he was interviewing me for a Team USA um, article, you know, I was sharing and I had like all this gratitude of like all the, the, the things that I've been through. And he was like, how can someone have this much gratitude for like have, going through all these things? And it's like, you know, I've, I've really learned that like literally like everything that we go through, like literally catapults us into the next moment and the more gratitude the more understanding that like we created it whether it was our thoughts whether it, even if it was unconscious you know like we did it and the more that we can like step into our power and understand that we are the ones creating our reality no one's doing it for us and to really learn that and accept that um you know, has allowed me to really like just expand and grow. And, and even when the, the times are uncomfortable, you know, cause I definitely experienced some uncomfortable this past weekend. And so, yeah, this weekend was super uncomfortable and I was able to like still put a smile on and continue and, and really like understand that like, even in the moments where we might not feel okay, like there's still a blessing. There's still something that we can learn from it. And that's what I want to teach others, you know? So that's kind of where the trust and coaching and all these things. And even my swimming, all like I learned so much from even getting to be on this road to Tokyo um, and all of the above. So super fun. It is super fun. It is super fun. And I'll link all the team trust things in the, um, in the comments and stuff because I want people to go see it. I know you're doing awesome things. Um, but kind of wrapping up here, two more things for you. Can you tell me about your involvement at Swim Up Hill? I know, I feel like the Adventures with Aggie community is very familiar with Swim Up Hill now that we've had Jamal and Wilma on the show. But um, yeah, can you just tell me kind of how you got involved and what it means to you? Yeah, so, uh, so super fun. So I met Jamal um, last year at team camp and I had been like following his journey and I was super inspired because like, I love teaching people how to swim. Um, I just love what he has done and everything. And then to meet Wilma this past January, 
um, was like such a blessing. Like it was just like our energies, like really connected. And like, we just have similar goals and, and it was just so amazing. And so then after, like, we got to, like, I got to experience Wilma and I really got to experience Jamal. Like, so then they, um, they made me an honorary like swim uphill victor right so and then I was like oh my gosh like it would be so cool to like be on a team so then like I asked like how could I like be on the team so I like switched my USA swimming and I joined their team and um and then it's just kind of evolved from that to where like you know I'm on the team like I get to be with them next week I'm gonna actually get to meet other team members of the team you know and just like Wilma is such an amazing coach. Like I never, like she, her passion for just wanting to help someone seeing the potential. Like, it's like how I am a coach to someone else. And like to get myself in someone else is like, oh my gosh, like they're so passionate. They want to help. They give me all the tools and, and all I have to do is apply. And that's like my ideal client, right? Of like, okay, I'm telling you all the things and they do everything and then they get the results. And it's like, it makes you feel so good, you know? So I know that it's going to evolve even past this. Like, I mean, we've talked about, you know, doing even more like with swimming lessons and things, but right now, you know, we're just, um, I'm learning how to swim even more than what I thought, you know, because there's so many things that I have been doing that have been actually, um, creating resistance and things within my swim and so I'm just excited to learn more about my own swimming so that I can help others with it so I know the evolution of swim uphill and me and them is just continuing to grow and expand and I'm just so grateful like they just feel like family like this is something that I've always wanted and to like get to experience them and to get to hang out with them and and it's just like uh it's it fills my heart with so much joy I just love it <laughs> I think I think you read my mind I was gonna say I feel like the swim up hill kind of community is like a swim family like there's swim teams but I feel like y'all do have kind of that swim family vibe which is so fun to watch I love it yeah like even um like so even like Wilma like she like bought an air fryer and a and a and a like a quizzy like thing to like do shakes and like so we did all our cooking like in the hotel room you know so like we each had our own room and like we would meet in the middle and like discuss like strategies and food and you know and all these things it just was like so fun like some days I felt like I didn't want to leave her room because it was just like oh this is like so you know, excited, but it's like, okay, it's time for bed, you know, and then it would be hard for me to sleep because I was just like, so excited and like, just wanting to learn more from her, you know, it was just an amazing, yeah, so it was definitely like having a sleepover with your friends and it's like, okay, like, all right, we're going to the pool now or now we're going to eat or, you know, whatever. And it was just like, this is probably the most exciting part of my road to Tokyo is getting to join up with them and um, experiencing them like full on, you know, which has been great. <laughs> it's so fun. I'm glad you're having fun. It makes me excited to watch, <laughs> but yes. cool. Okay. Just kind of wrapping up your last question for you. I end all of my shows on advice. So what is one piece of advice you would like to give to your younger self? One piece of advice I would give to my younger self, enjoy the journey, enjoy every moment, enjoy the steps, you know, because like, I feel like, like when we're younger, like we're always like rushing to like, I want to be an adult or, you know, I want to like go to this next thing. And it's like, if we could just understand that, like, oh, what a blessing it is to, you know, be in this now moment and getting to experience it like that is the best like the the most important thing um so I'll share like I I did a vlog like at my meet so it's on my YouTube Sarah Bowfinger and the one thing that I shared at the end was like I actually got to experience this 13 year old and um just sharing with her about like my story and like just like motivating her like it it definitely felt like like you know, that whole like, oh, what would I tell my younger self kind of thing? Because it was like, I was literally like, oh my gosh, like you're amazing. And like, really like sharing with her, like how great she really was. And I was just like, man, if someone could have been there like that for me, or even if I would have known about that, or even gotten to experience that or no, you know, all of those things, like, 
it would have been so much even more fun to kind of go through this, you know? And so, and, th and then I realized my why for doing this by talking to that little girl was like, I just want to motivate and inspire younger generations, younger people, and even older people to just really do what it is that you love and enjoy the moment. That's so cool that you got to, you, you were already thinking about this question before I asked you, <laughs> you, had, <laughs> you experienced it. <laughs> I did before, so beforehand. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome, though. I'm sure the little girl appreciated it. But um, thank you so much for coming on, Sarah. This has been great. I feel like every time we speak, I learn something new about you, which is so exciting. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. Ah, you're so welcome. I'm so grateful and blessed to have connected with you and getting to share with you. I just love everything about what you're doing and you. So thank you so much. Awesome.